Hello everybody and welcome to my 24th Excel 2013 tutorial uh, and I'm going to move away from formatting a bit now and I'm just going to move on to graphs for the next uh, five or six tutorials ish. Uh, I'm going to go through each type of graph um, that you can put in uh, in, in each tutorial uh, and I'll give a brief explanation of, of each and what you'd use it for and when you'd use it and what it shows uh, and then also obviously how you would use that graph. So in this tutorial, we're going to go into pie charts. Uh, I've got a little bit of data here. So I've got some locations, which are various capital cities around the world. Uh, and then I've got some random data split by quarter uh, and then uh, total. I'm going to call it 2014 total because that was the last year uh, or last full year. And uh, this data doesn't really represent anything, it's just random data. Uh, there will be a link below to download the samples, so you'll be able to get this yourself if you want to play around. Uh, but it's nothing impressive, it's just a little bit of data just to show you how it works. Um, so yeah, we're going to create a pie chart. So pie charts are used to represent each category, what proportion it is of the total. Uh, so your probably best explanation actually comes from Excel itself. If you highlight over the graph, uh, you can see it gives a quick explanation of when you'd use it. So, use this chart type to show proportions of a whole. Use it when the total of your numbers is 100%. Uh, and if I create one, then you'll see why. So, if to in order to create it, I'm just going to highlight the totals that I want. Uh, and I'm going to highlight the categories that I want to split by. Uh, and then I'm going to click on the pie chart button and I'm going to hover over these uh, and each one in turn is going to give you an example of what it looks like, which is very, very helpful. Uh, and the, you can see that we've got some 3D one, we've got a weird donut one, uh, and then we've got these ones that's kind of split out one of the, the one of the categories into the two other categories, uh, which I don't think that's useful in this situation, but there are a couple of times we would use it, so feel free to play around with them. Uh, I'm not going to go into them too much because I don't really use them that often. They're, they're a bit show-offy and aren't actually that useful. Um, so I'm just going to select the normal pie uh, and then I'm just going to click and drag it under here. Now, if you want to, uh, if you right-click and go to Move Chart and go to New Sheet, uh, then it drops it into a new sheet like this and you've got a whole massive one. Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm just going to move it back to as an object in city by quarter. So it's just going to put it back into my worksheet because uh, I want it right underneath my data so you can see it. Um, now, second thing, title. Titles are very important. So I'm going to pretend this is sales. Sales total 2014 split by location uh, and you'll be able to see that this now gives a graphical representation of the proportion of each of the categories it doesn't give you any values uh, at the moment uh, it just gives you a kind of visual representation of what the split is so you can see straight away that Paris and Berlin are the smallest uh, and then Delhi is definitely one of the biggest uh, closely followed by London and Beijing, um, with New York being a little bit smaller. Uh, if you hover over, it gives you the value and also the percentage. Uh, so you can see that this one's 22%, this one's 22%, and this one's 22%, but with a slightly higher value of 273. Uh, and they're just the values that are in here. Now, there's quite a few changes you can do, and uh, some of them are, are on the side here. So this one down here just allows you to turn some of them off. So we can get rid of London, apply, and then London will disappear. Click it again, and then it will come back in again. Um, so that's quite useful for people to play around with. And then moving up, we've got some colors. So you can change what color scheme you use, you can use monochromatic ones uh, and some of them are quite cool uh, depending on what you want to use them for um, I'm just going to stick with the basic colourful one uh, and on styles you can also go through and you can select certain ones of these I'm just going to stick with the default um, and you'll see now that it's added some data labels in because I've been 
messing around with this. Um, so I'm going to untick them in this top bit chart element. So we can turn off the title. Uh, we can turn off the legend. The unfortunate thing I find with this is it doesn't keep your formatting when you turn them off. It just kind of deletes them. Um, so that means we've got to put that title back in again now. Um, I'm going to do a naughty thing and I'm just going to delete the title. And you can do this, you can do it like this and you can do it up here as well. Now data labels are quite useful. Uh, if you tick data labels, uh, then it's going to put some labels on here. And if you click on this arrow uh, and go to more options, uh, and then we get some options over here on the right hand side, label options, uh, and we can choose what it's showing. So I quite like to have category name in there. And I put it on the outside end, I prefer it on the outside, because that means then you can get rid of your your legend uh, and you've got them around the outside instead. And suddenly your graph's getting a bit bigger and it's a little bit more visual. Um, if we select our data labels again and go over here, uh, we can also add other things in. So I can put the percentage in, you can put the legend key in so they've got a little bit of colour, uh, and you can put the value in as well, which is quite useful. And then that just gives you the numbers as well. Um, one thing I've learned is when you're sharing graphs of people, uh, it's always quite good to include numbers on there as well because some people don't respond well to kind of visual representations. They prefer just to read the numbers um, and kind of be done with that. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a few other options you can do as well. So if you go to format chart area, uh, then you've got some options in here for you can fill in the the background and things like that. Uh, you can give it borders and uh, if you go into here, you can give it shadows and stuff and all kinds of jazz. Change the size of it, um, but yeah, you know, there's the their their options are in there. And if if you wanted to have one split by quarter then you just have to make a new pie chart for each quarter. So pie charts necessarily aren't that good for representing large amounts of data. Uh, they're really only very good for just kind of summing up totals and giving you a breakdown that will give you a visual representation to show, right, this one is twice as big as this one. And it's really easy to see in this, wow, that's, that's twice as big, straight away, boom. Um, it's actually three times as big, but yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so that's pie charts. Uh, any questions, drop them in the down low. Um, and if you'd like this video, please leave a like. And if you really liked it, then hit your mouse and make everything go crazy on your screen. Um, that's what I did. Uh, or just subscribe, you know, it's up to you. Anyway, I hope to catch you in the next video where we're going into bar charts, which will uh, do column graphs, uh, which will show you how to represent the, all of the data a little bit better. So thanks for listening and I hope to catch you then.